There was once a shepherd and a farmer who lived and worked side by side, and they were great, great friends. And as the years went by, the farmer was thriving and the shepherd was suffering. His land was simply not as good as the farmer's, and his sheep were dying, and it was becoming a very difficult time. So that finally, the shepherd went to the farmer and told him, I'm going to have to leave. I, I just can't do this anymore. And the farmer said, you know, you can't leave. You're, you're my best friend and you're my neighbor. You can't leave. And the shepherd said, well, what am I to do? And the farmer thought for just a moment. And he said, you know what? I have more land than I need. Take half of my land. And the shepherd said, how can I possibly take half of your land? And the farmer said, just take it. You know, it's, it's fine. Take it. The shepherd said, you know, it's just too big a gift. And the farmer said to him, put it in your hand. He picked up a stone from the ground and he placed it in his hand and he put his hand on top and he said, who is stronger, the giver or the receiver? And the shepherd didn't know what to answer and the farmer said, you see, the receiver is stronger because you're supporting the gift and the giver. Hmm. So the shepherd thanked him. I believe we're all storytellers. We all tell stories all the time. In fact, as we experience, and this is the connection with coaching, as we experience our life, we tell it. How we got here this morning, how we um, chose the job we're in, where we went for dinner the night before, what vacation we're planning this year and where we went last year. We're constantly telling the stories of our life. Yeah, but what's interesting is that those stories are completely and utterly subjective. We choose the words, we choose the narrative, we choose the characters, we choose the back, we choose everything about the stories we tell. And in essence, the stories are what defines our reality. If you take two children who grew up in the same house, they'll tell an entirely different story of their childhood. I often turn around to my sister and say, you know, did we grow up in the same house? Was this the same childhood? Because she tells it completely differently to, to the way I do. So in fact, what happens is that the stories that we tell, and we're constantly telling them, define our experience all the time. They define our reality. So that's what's make, what makes it so magic. When you start looking at the stories, when you start changing the stories, when you start examining why we're telling these stories, I'm sure there's someone in every single person's life who tells the same old stories again and again and again, and as soon as they open their mouth, you know, they say one word and you know which stories is going to come out. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, I often wonder, you know, why is this person selling, telling the same story? Why are they stuck in the groove of the same story? And is that story actually serving them well? Because sometimes these stories don't serve us terribly well, but we still tell them. So the process I go through in the story work I do is I help people examine their stories and examine how they're using storytelling and often create new stories or discard the stories they're telling. But it's a very, very, very powerful tool. So, what is storytelling? I very much to know how to make stories so breathtaking like you just did with, in today's internet age when mm -hmm. it's so difficult to Especially since we don't have, uh, it's not a computerized school. So. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a really good issue because people often say, you know, you, you tell stories and you don't have costumes and you don't have lighting and you don't have special effects and who's going to listen? And I sometimes ask myself, who's going to listen? And then I sit down and I start telling. And the kids come from all different places and adults too. And, the power of the story is beyond what they're getting on television. It's something very different. It's something we're actually going to talk about today when we talk about power of storytelling. And I think we'll come back to that point of what is it about the story that can actually compete. It's a different thing. It is as breathtaking, it is as fascinating, and it goes much deeper sometimes than what they're getting on screens. I believe that my life is, you know, a total, total um, example of that. I have four boys who are computer television crazy and every day they say to me, Mummy, tell us from your head. Tell us from your head. Tell us a story from your head. It's much better than anything else they can say. I thought I should have won. The one who told the story about the horses should have won. So I turned around and said, you are so right. The one with the horses was so much better. And then he said, but I want to hear your story. So I said, what, right here? And he goes, yeah. So I said, okay. <laughs> so I got to tell my story in New York. <laughs> is three wishes, three blessings. And the first is that you should all be blessed with a friendship like the farmer and the shepherd, a friendship of generosity and support. 
And the second wish is that you should all know, recognize, and be able to free those that most need to be freed. Like the young woman who freed the birds. And my final wish is that all of you remember that wherever you are, you hold up the sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.